That's Bradley. Defense Exhibit 26 came into evidence. Defense Exhibit Bradley then unprompted <coughs> as this. And why should you find there's a concern with their truthfulness? Yerti is the first one. <coughs> you have that testimony. But then we go to what is the most obvious indication that Willis and Wade were not truthful on the point of timing. And that's Bradley. Defense Exhibit 26 came into evidence. Defense Exhibit 26 comes in and says, and you know I went into this the last hearing. It says that on January the 5th, 2024, at approximately 9.49 a.m., there's text messages that are exchanged between Ms. Merchant and Mr. Bradley. And the text messages go like just date, and that's from Ms. Merchant. Ms. Merchant says, do you think it started before she hired him? Bradley, who we now know from Defense Exhibit 39, has been texting with Ms. Merchant for a number of months. This is not the first time. This is months within the, the, the communications between the two. Mr. Bradley says, absolutely. Now, absolutely is not a speculative word. That's not speculation. That's a definitive statement. And Bradley then unprompted <coughs> as this. And unprompted is important. It started when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton. It goes on, Ms. Merchant says, or he, she liked it started when she left the DA's office with the appropriate um, emoji or whatever one would call it to say it was liked. And then Ms. Bradley, Mr. Bradley say they met at the municipal court CLE conference. Again, unprompted. He's now definitively telling Ms. Merchant when this relationship started. Ms. Merchant says, that's what I figured when he was married. And then Ms. Merchant says, and we're now talking about a couple hours later, she texts and says, upon information and relief, Willis and Wade met while both were serving as magistrate judges and began a romantic relationship at that time. And Mr. Bradley responds, no, municipal court, thank you. Doesn't say it didn't start then. He doesn't suggest that she's wrong other than magistrate court municipal. Now we have that, and it's in evidence. And what does Bradley do? He knows that he's put himself in a position that if he testifies truthfully on the witness stand, your honor is in a position to be able to find if you choose to, that both Willis and Wade lied. So what does Bradley do? Look, you were an assistant U.S. attorney. You know how this works when you have witnesses in this situation. Mr. Bradley did everything he could possibly do to evade answering questions. No recollection, couldn't remember, it was speculation. Anything he could possibly say that would cause your honor not to believe that Bradley knew when this relationship started. I suggest they were clear-cut lies, and the truth is in Defense Exhibit 26. And so if we take that view, that he thoroughly impeached himself, that he did not give truthful conduct, uh, you know, what's left standing? Generally, you would see someone who's impeached, perhaps we have some kind of core that you could point back to and say that's the time he was telling the truth. In these text messages, is it ever definitively shown how he knew this and that he actually did know it, other than just a assertion outright, absolutely. Usually, if a state has a witness that goes sideways, they've got him locked in, they've sat down with a detective, and got a full statement. We don't have that here. But what you have is a text message, which is a prior statement of Bradley, that he did on his own, that was not given to him by someone else. The only thing that the court has just noted is, how do we know he wasn't speculating? Because you don't have to accept the fact 
that he wasn't speculating. The cases that I provided, I think by email yesterday, the first um, dealing with that, you can disbelieve that testimony and draw a negative inference. That's the Ferguson case. On Lee, the other case, you can simply take the prior inconsistent statement as substantive evidence. It has the same value. And that's what I'm asking you to do, to take what was the unprompted statement in Defense Exhibit 26 of Bradley and take that on its face, face value, that that is an indication that Bradley in fact knew and had said he did. If you accept that, you have to have concerns about the truthfulness of Willis and Wade on the timing issue. And that's from Ms. Merchant. Ms. Merchant says, do you think it started before she's not a speculative word? That's not speculation. That's a, she hired him, Bradley, who we now know from Defense Exhibit 39, has been texting with Ms. Merchant for a number of months. This is not the first time. Before, at approximately 9.49 a.m., why should you find there's a concern with their truthfulness? The RT is the first one. <coughs> You have that testimony. But then we go that on January the 5th, 2020, and the text messages go like just date. Mr. Bradley says, absolutely. Now, absolutely, I went into this the last hearing. It says, unprompted is important. It started when she left the DA's office and was a judge. This is months within the, the communications between the two. Bradley then unprompted <coughs> as this and to what is the most obvious indication that will attack Bradley. Defense Exhibit 26 came into evidence. Defense Exhibit 26 comes in and says, and you know, and Wade, we're not truthful on the point of timing. And a definitive statement and 